Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another opening. This time I'm opening the new Spider Friends expansion. Just got this in the mail today. Thanks to uh, Miniature Market for their speedy delivery. Let's get into it. Unfortunately in the UK I can't buy it from local game stores at the minute because it's locked down and online stores can't get it in the UK so I have to import it from America. So let's have a quick little peek at the booklet. So if you guys want to read that, you can pause the video and read it yourself. And I must say, the artwork on this box is quite nice. Alright, let's get into it. Start. First character, Chameleon, um, Sinister Six, main character, level one, they're all level ones. Uh, this one is a 3-3 three, three with one health and has Blessing in Disguise. Chameleon has the printed keyword, powers of all face-up uh, Sinister Syndicate support counts on your side. Now, that could be very useful, that's a good card. Uh, the next Sinister Six main character, this one is Hobgoblin, he is a 7-2, one health. Flight and Ferocious, so while in melee combat, Hobgoblin strikes with four main characters without Ferocious. And has Lethal as well, so if Hobgoblin, uh, uh, if Hobgoblin wounds a defending supporting character, KO it. This is a very good one. Probably the best, um, well, I'd say the second best aggressive one. Or maybe the best aggressive one, probably the, um, I can't remember its name now, but the uh, the one that has uh, Hunter, Craven, that's the one. Yeah, but Hobgoblin is really good as well. Uh, Shocker, the next one, and the last one. Uh, he's a 4-5, range, and one health. That's in the sixth, of course. Vibration Wave, main, you pay a blue, you push an enemy front row supporting character on their side to the back row. This seems like the weakest because it's supporting character only. The stats are okay. Yeah. So out, of the, out of all these, Hobgoblin and Chameleon are the new ones I'd consider playing. Although Shocker isn't terrible, because he's got decent stats, but... His power isn't great. All right, moving on. Um, this set includes four copies of Beetle. Uh, Beetle is a one cost, uh, one one stat lineup with one health and has flight and has climbs. At the start of your main phase, you may exhaust a location on your side. If you do, you put a plus one plus one counter on Beetle. Okay, so two two if you have a location turn one. Seems pretty underwhelming. What's power do? Static electric bike main blue. Remove each plus one plus one counter on Beetle. Then put that many minus one minus one counts on enemy character. He could melee attack. Yeah, um, this card ain't great. Uh, moving on, uh, we have the two cost trapster. Trapster is a one six range and one health. Has paste gun. So combat red. You choose a defender. It is immobile until trapster leaves play. Immobile meaning that character cannot move. Okay. Uh, so that means if it's in the front row, it, it, it can't move from the front row to the back row. If it's in the back row, it can't move from the front row to the um, front row, whatever. So that's actually a decent power, I think. 1-6, so it's going to stay around a while. Yeah, not bad. Probably not a card that you would automatically include, but it's decent. It's not bad, it's not great. I think there's, there'll be some good uses for it. Uh, moving on, uh, we have a 3 cost, Hydraman, 5-3, uh, 2 wounds, and has Man of Water. When Hydraman is affected by Freeze, KO him, this power remains on while he's face down. Okay, there aren't that many characters with Freeze that are heavily played, but that is a downside and can be rele can be relevant in certain scenarios. Uh, fluid Tactics, it's, it's the next power, is if Hydraman would gain any amount of attack from a combat plot twist, you may have him gain that much defense instead or vice versa. Okay, this is a good this is a good card, I think. Five three, two wounds on three. That's pretty good in my opinion. Moving on. We have the three cost speed demon. Speed demon is a four five. One health and has run like the devil. So when speed demon attacks the first time each turn, you ready him at the end of combat. So essentially you can attack twice if it survives, maybe even multiple times if it survives. So this is good at clearing a lot of small supporting characters. Okay, what else does it do? When Speed Demon attacks each additional time each turn, if the Grandmaster is faced on your side, ready Speed Demon at the end of combat. Okay, okay. 
So you could potentially attack three times with Grandmaster up. As uh, our remix, yeah, uh, let's do survive. It has to be the first one to ready, and then the additional time Grandmaster is face up. Use ready him, and obviously um, Grandmaster ready. Him. So okay, that that stacks, doesn't it? So you can keep swinging. Okay, this is all right. It's a good card, I think. Four five stat lineup is pretty good, and attacking maybe multiple times is pretty nice as well. Yeah, speed team is good. Now I believe this is the best supporting character in the set and possibly the best four drop in the game, barring Iron Man from maybe Illustrated, but I think this is maybe a bit better than that. Uh, Boomerang, four cost, uh, he's a 2-4, uh, flight range, one health, and has specialised boomerangs. Once per turn, you want to join your main phase, but not during combat. You may choose a boomerang this character hasn't thrown yet. Then choose an enemy front row, back row character, and... So you choose one of these boomerangs and apply the effect. You have to choose one you haven't already used. So Bladerang, you put a minus one, minus one count on each of the characters you chose. Gasserang, they lose keyword powers this turn. Uh, Gravity Rang, uh, they can't ready on their next turn. Razorang, they lose support in their superpowers this turn. Reflexerang, you daze them. Screamerang, they can't strike back this turn. And Shatterang, KO an enemy... Um, Equipment on each of them. Okay. Um, yeah, this card is busted. His stats are pretty bad, but the powers it has and the amount of uh, different powers it has makes him so uh, utilitarian so that can be used in a lot of different scenarios and all of them are really good. There's no bad one in my opinion. So yeah, this is a brilliant supporting character and it's definitely an auto include in a lot of decks. Moving on. Four copies of Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin is a 5-5, five five, one health, and has nothing without the Green Goblin. While Green Goblin is face up on your side, Hobgoblin has its printed keywords and superpowers. Okay, not sure how useful that will be. And he has lethal. It's a four cost four or five of lethal, maybe gaining more so powers and keywords if Green Goblin's out. There's not many applications for that, but yeah. So very thematic, I guess, for the card. Moving on. Play four copies of five cost Shocker. So Shocker is an 8-3, range one health, and safe cracker. Um, main, you pay a red, you turn an enemy location face down. If you do, you draw a card, okay. That's just not bad. There's like no downside to that whatsoever. And then cover your cracks. That's a hilarious power. Main, you pay a balloon. If you turn down an enemy location this turn, KO a face down resource on that turn. Okay, that's not too bad either. Yeah, um, this card's really good. 5 cost, 8-3 stat lineup. Okay, that's good already. And the fact that you can turn down locations and maybe KO resources, that makes it even better if, of course, you have the locations. Yeah, Shocker is brilliant. Not as good as uh, Boomerang, but still really good. Moving on uh, to the 6 cost in this set. Uh, Tombstone, he's a 7-6 range, 1 health, and has cold as ice. Tombstone is unaffected by ice, uh, freeze, unlike um, Hydro Man, who auto dies to uh, freeze. Um, so hard as marble, any turn combat, you pay green. If you use enemy character in the combat, they can't strike this, com this, this combat. Okay, um, decent stat lineup, decent power. He's okay, but Venom's better, so decent, but not great. Uh, moving on. Four copies of seven drop lizard. So lizard is a nine five, two wounds and has three keywords. Okay, first one is berserker. So when the lizard attacks, you put a plus one plus one counter on him. Okay, so ten six ferocious. Okay, he needed that with the poor defense he has, uh, which is when he's in melee combat, he strikes before enemy characters without ferocious. And regeneration at the start of your turn, heal a wound from lizard. So if he perhaps stays up and doesn't get range attacked, he can heal a wound he has accumulated. So yeah, this is a nice card, this one. Very good. Well, I wouldn't say very good, it's just it's just good. Moving on. To our plot twist now. Uh, play Concealed Firearm, or as I like to call it, F.U. Solo. Now you all know why. Uh, any turn combat, choose a defender on your side in the combat. They gain 
range and plus one attack and zero defenses combat. Now, as you may notice, this is a generic plot twist, so this any deck can use this, not Sinister Six. And the reason why I say F you solo, because if your main character doesn't have range, you can give it range to strike back solo to prevent any um, snowball effects with plus one counters occurring. So yeah, this may see some use in particular decks. Right, moving on to our um, Sinister Syndicate plot twists. Uh, we have four copies of Teamwork Makes the Scheme Work. Okay, very um, rhymey. So in the main, you're ready up to six Sinister Syndicate characters on your side. Okay, that scene is like a, a really good X Factor. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be six on board. It says up to six. It could just be the one. It could be two. It could be three. This card seems really good. Uh, moving on. There's included four copies of Working Together, How Can We Fail? Well, you're evil, so you always got to fail. Uh, Sinister Syndicate, plot twist, uh, main, put a plus one, plus one, counter on up to six Sinister Six point characters. Okay, very thematic. Uh, ready six, put plus one, plus one, counter on up to six. Yeah, it's basically a law of soldiers without the restrictions. So yeah, this is a good card as well. And then lastly, we have four copies of Secret Hideout. Uh, Syndicate Special Location. Uh, family is a source of weakness. When you play this location, you choose a face-up Sinister Syndicate main character on your side to take a hostage. Now, I believe I will explain what hostage does. The card doesn't, unfortunately, so you have to read through um, the, uh, the leaflet to know what hostage does. So... Secret hideout. Family is a source of weakness. Let's your sinister main character take hostage. If you have any uh, secret hideouts in your deck, you must bring a hostage pile, which includes one more different spider friends supporting characters with the friends and family keyword. Okay. Um, I don't have any on hand to show, but yeah, there are different cards that you've got to bring with you. Uh, so when you, uh, what does it say? Um, where was I? So when you play Secret Hideout, one of your main characters takes a hostage. You choose a character from your hostage pile and put it beneath the Secret Hideout as a hostage. Your main character gets the keyword print, uh, keyword, uh, keyword power printed by that hostage while the main character is in your front row. So it gives an example here on the back. So if you take Mary Jane Watson, which is a 0-3 by the way, one of a kind, one friends and family thing. Uh, Mary Jane usually gives your f uh, spider friend's main characters pounce, but obviously if you take the hostage, your Sinister Six main character gains the pounce while it's in your front row. Uh, but it doesn't have to be protecting anyone, okay? Okay. So when the main character gets stunned or leaves play, turn the secret hideout face down and set the hostage aside. Does it go back into the hostage pile though? Similarly, if an effect turns the secret hostage face down, set the hostage aside. Once the hostage card is no longer beneath the secret hideout, it also stops granting its keyword power. It's possible for the same main character to have the multiple hostages, one for each secret hideout you play while well, you have that main character. Okay, that's not too bad. So you can, if you were to keep the main character up, you can have multiple hostages with multiple different friends and family powers granted to your main character, which is quite nice. But as soon as your main character goes, or the secret host, um, the secret hideout goes face down, or gets removed from play, the hostages get uh, put aside, but not back to the hostage bar. Okay. Hopefully you will get that. And then notes: a hostage is never actually in play. It's either in a hostage pile beneath a secret hideout, or set aside. Okay. So they're not considered in play cards. Okay. Phew. I'll we'll finally explain that. All right. So that has been the uh, Spidey Foes set. Uh, my opinion on this set is very, very high. I really like a lot of the characters and sporting and plot twists, main characters as well in this set. Big improvement from uh, Friendly Neighborhood and Crossover Volume 2, in my opinion. Those sets um, were really lacking in uh, quality, in my personal opinion. So that has been my video. Hope you guys have enjoyed, and thank you for watching. See you next time.